The congregation will please stand as you are able. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Our opening hymn is hymn 482, found in the blue hymnal. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Katie. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, 
to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willing, willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Please join me in praying Psalm 23, as found in your service bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in He makes me lie down in the pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. He revives my soul, and guides me along my path by the way for his name's sake. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not, has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. 
Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for family reflections. Please bear with me. If you can't see this, it says large print. <laughs> Catherine. Katie, mom, aunt, teacher, grandma, Oma, beloved. Katie raised four daughters, one grandson, and touched the lives of countless of other children through her work as a Montessori teacher, and later giving other less fortunate children that much needed head start. Oh, and she was, of course, a devoted Packers, Brewers, and Badgers fan. I searched my brain for a first memory of my mom, something not so easy when you're past 60. What came to mind immediately was mom's love of holidays and gatherings with family and friends. She would obsess over finding exactly the right card for an occasion and wouldn't rest until she knew it had been received. Christmas morning was its own event. Gifts distributed in order from stocking to biggest at a mind-numbingly slow pace so she could savor the reactions of each child one at a time. Dinners with grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins were equally special, whether it be a cookout, a sit-down meal, or a family gathering in a local restaurant. Mom almost always ordered something involving cheese. Mom was our planner, our protector, our chauffeur. In my current job as chair of a university dance department, I am responsible for scheduling and delivering roughly 1,000 courses each semester. But I have an assistant and registrars and others to help. Mom, well, somehow she managed to get every one of us to and from our myriad after school lessons and activities and still got us fed and ready for bed after we took care of our mini zoo on 81st Street. Mary played the clarinet, nice and compact. Betsy played the flute, maybe a little bigger. Christopher played the trumpet, still about the size of a carry-on. But Sue, well, Sue played the cello. Somehow we all managed to fit in the car and mom made it all happen. And we sure didn't make it easy. Ballet point shoes are made from layers of satin and canvas and glue, no wood. As your feet get hot and sweaty during a full day of rehearsal, the glue softens and the shoes become less supportive. In the 80s, ballet companies often had shoe ovens to help the shoes dry out and the glue to reharden. After all, a pair of point shoes was very expensive back then and still is about $100. At Milwaukee Ballet, the shoe oven was for full company members only. I was but a lowly apprentice at the time. So I got the idea to use our own oven on 81st Street. Everything worked out great. That is, until we sat down to eat the standing rib roast that mom had prepared in the same oven. Ew. And I probably shouldn't have dyed uh, that silk shirt blue in the same pot that mom was going to use to boil corn on the cob. It came out green. I've always felt guilty that my job led me to move away to other states. But that's what all those lessons and mom's unwavering support brought about. And mom made it to almost every one of my productions, usually with Chris and Betts in tow and sometimes Mary, too. When I joined Ballet Met in Columbus, Ohio, I was one of five Susans, and there were only eight women in the company. So, given that it was the 1980s, we each ended up with a colorful nickname to keep rehearsal corrections simple. 
I've been told I had a pretty heavy Wisconsin accent back then, and SCTV and the movie Strange Brew were very popular at the time. I soon made the mistake of saying to my fellow Milwaukee native Kathleen Riley, another dancer, take off, ya hoser, in front of some of the other dancers. And to this day, I still have friends and my husband who refer to me as hoser. Well, there's a tradition in the ballet world. Because the Nutcracker performances and tours typically wrap up or are happening during Thanksgiving and Christmas, even New Year's Eve here, dancers get together and host what we called orphan parties to get through the holidays, given that we were away from our families. Ballet Met's Nutcracker was my first holiday season away from home, so mom flew out to visit. Her timing was perfect. She joined the Ballet Met orphans for a holiday dinner. The food was delicious, the camaraderie was wonderful, lots of laughter, and then someone said, would you like some more stuffing, Mrs. Hoser? <laughs> Turned out, a substantial portion of the, my fellow dancers thought my last name was actually Hoser. But mom didn't give it a second thought and went right ahead and enjoyed more stuffing. As I transitioned from performing to teaching and later heading a department, mom's support came with a new bond, that of teacher administrator. She was interested in every detail, no matter how minute, from syllabus to tenure. tenure. She even came to know many of my students and be loved by many of our faculty, some of whom always joined us for meals when mom was in town. Then along came Rachel, my daughter. It was an easy pregnancy and mom was tuned in every step of the way, even weighing in on the baby names we were considering. Less than diplomatically, I'll note, very Katie, she was very stubborn if you don't know, already know that. Delivery was a very second, scary stat C-section, and David, my husband, nearly lost us both, all in the middle of the night. After things settled down and I had wakened and held our baby, Rachel, Dave waited, um, Dave waited until 5 a.m. Milwaukee time, but he couldn't wait any longer to call Katie and let her know that she had a granddaughter. For those of you who know Katie well, you know that she was not even remotely a morning person. But she answered the phone right away, and David probably could have called her at 2 a.m. She would have been wide awake then. Hi, Katie. It's David. They're, they're okay. And with that, he broke down in tears and sobbed. With his mother-in-law on the line, something neither of them had experienced before, but given that the call could have been much more tragic, she seemed to understand right away. After waiting so David could reset, she finally said, boy or girl? Her flight to Pittsburgh was booked within the hour, and her love for Rachel was instantaneous and powerful. She loved reading to and later with Rachel. Art supplies flowed constantly. Katie even sent a small desk and a kid's painting easel, both of which Rachel used for years. Often naked, she would be painting herself as much as the paper, but always filled with the creativity and joy her Oma nurtured in her and their trips to the Mayfair Build-A-Bear store were legendary. As my household started having three separate Nutcracker productions in two different school calendars, our winter trips to Milwaukee became more challenging, and eventually we developed a new tradition of family beach vacations, even going to Mexico together. Mom would have a late breakfast, of course, and then head out to the beach where she could always be found in a beach chair under the tent that Dave and Chris hauled out every morning, her head slung what seemed painfully low as she devoured her latest mystery novel. She could read for hours and hours as long as she was surrounded by her family and her ocean. On our last day of each trip, everyone would pack up and tidy the place, and then Katie would lead us out to the beach where she would say, goodbye, ocean. It was always bittersweet, but filled with love and appreciation for family. One of my favorite memories occurred the day before my 50th birthday. I was teaching my usual morning ballet class, expecting to be picked up by Dave, who, although he had been down with the flu earlier in the week, had booked a bed and breakfast on Presque Isle in scenic Erie, Pennsylvania. So romantic, or so I thought. I turned around to check the clock on the wall, only to find Mom, Chris, Betts, and Dave standing in the doorway he had flown them in as a surprise. 
As soon as class was over, we piled into the van bound for what I still thought was Erie, Pennsylvania. But it sure seemed like a long time to get to Erie. It's supposed to be an hour and a half away. Every time we approached a highway sign, we somehow ended up alongside a truck or mom blocking my view before I could read the sign. About 30 minutes from our destination, Betsy accidentally spilled the beans about the other guests yet to arrive, but mom and Dave covered, up, covered it up so well, I thought they were talking about our next beach trip. I was completely shocked when we arrived at Massanutten, Virginia to be met by Dave's parents and three special friends. Finally, when Mary and Carl knocked on the door, they and the poodles, although I don't, they had driven all the way from Wisconsin, but I don't think the poodles did any driving. Uh, I melted completely. It was truly a special weekend, the best for 50th birthday ever with my entire family. Mom was surrounded by her family and friends in her last months, especially the last week. It seems like she had said her goodbyes. We all knew she loved us, and she knew we all loved her. She had said goodbye to her ocean. Mom, I love you. I miss you. And I'm grateful for all you were for each of us. It's a hard thing to follow up with. Um, for anybody that doesn't know me, I'm the grandson, Christopher Sharkey Stowe, and uh, I'm about to read a poem that one of my good friends wrote on actually the day that Grandma passed away. And it sums up what I, everybody in this room probably believes her to be. It's called Beyond the Curtain by R.J. Loving. In the sea of stars, like a moon you stood out, keeping light in the night. In the lake of clouds, like the sun, you shined, keeping our plants and children stuffed with warmth and light. But then death, an entity so cruel and jealous, attempted to take the light from you, leaving shadow as a result of its wake. Fortunately for us, death was far too late. For your light was already immortalized in the path of your family, your friends who stand by you even in your journey to the hopeless unknown. And now as you continue to light our world from beyond curtains, in our souls will remain a whole dedicated to our love for you, your life, and its stories forever to be told. And that really sums up, in my opinion, how Grandma lived with much love for anybody that would touch her if you would gave her a chance. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I have a really dear friend who gave me a line probably a dozen years ago. It's one of those lines that you get and you're, you begin to think about it, and the more you think about it, the more you realize it's true. And here's the line. Love has a look to it. Love has a look to it. You see, we can get caught up in romantic notions of love. Love is a feeling, love as an emotion. And certainly that sort of love is what compels us and gives us joy and it both fills our hearts and sometimes breaks our hearts. But when my friend said love has a look to it, what she means is that love is a set of behaviors. It's paying attention to the little things. 
It's paying attention to music practice. It's paying attention to preparing dinner. It's, preparing, it's paying attention to getting people where they need to be. It's paying attention to how the Christmas gifts are distributed. It's paying attention to all of the things that bring relationships to life. A loving look is a look that will spend time away from home to be with family. Love has the look of commitment. It has the look of persistence. And sometimes love even has the look of what I call the motherly herding capability of getting a group of people to do the things that maybe they don't want to do at the time, but in years to come they will look back with fondness that they got to do them. Everybody in our society, it seems, comments on the importance of family. I hear it a lot in my business. But to be around Katie was someone who was to be around someone who didn't just give lip service to family, but did the nitty gritty work of creating family. I just read an article this week that fewer and fewer houses are being built with dining rooms because it's considered wasted space, because people don't have time to eat together. But for someone like Katie, gathering family around a table, that was as much communion as what happens in this church on a Sunday morning. And so all of us who have known Katie will mourn her, will grieve her, and no one will mourn and grieve her more than her immediate family who experienced her love through the years. And that's what we're here to do today, to share those stories, to remember Katie and all of who she was, and to support those who will always feel Katie's loss. But as Christians, we don't gather here without hope. That's why I was so moved when the family chose today's gospel reading. Because it's not just about some ethereal promise. It's a real promise that Christians hold dear. That the end of this life isn't the end of it all. And that one day we will be gathered together with those we have loved throughout our lives. Jesus says in that wonderful passage that he goes to prepare a place, to have a place at God's table, to have a place prepared. Our faith says that Katie is even now in the presence of the one who has prepared a place for her. And while we remember her and mourn her and celebrate her life, we too live in the hope that in the last day, we will all be gathered together with our loved ones around the table of the eternal Eucharistic feast where God will take that, what I always like to think of, that heavenly handkerchief and wipe away every tear from every eye. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism and standing as we are able, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found in your service bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty.
Prayers for this service are found on page 497 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. For our sister Katie, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Katie and dry the tears of those who weep. He wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. He raised the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for Katie and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May her soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may be seated. On behalf of Katie's family, thank you for being with us today and for joining us for this time of prayer and praise and celebration. They, you, everyone who is here is invited to a time of fellowship and a, a light luncheon that's going to be conducted in our parish hall. To find the parish hall, go through any of the doors at the rear of this space, take a left, go up the stairs, or if you would prefer to take the elevator, it is to your right at the end of that hallway. I, I just need to say that um, our elevator is slow but steady. It will get you there. Uh, and then once you get to the upper level, someone will be there to direct you to the parish hall. Whenever Christians and especially Episcopalians gather at moments like these, the best way we know how to give witness to the hope in Christ that we celebrate is through the celebration of Holy Communion, the Eucharist. In the Episcopal Church, all baptized Christians are invited to receive communion. It is the Lord's table and not ours. So here's how that will work today as we continue to use some of our protocols from, from the pandemic. At the time of communion, I will be standing in the center with a paten with bread on it. There will be a cruet bearer to this side and a chalice bearer to this side. If you, and so once you receive the bread, you've got three options. Option number one, consume the bread and move back to your seat. Option two, you can either come to this side and take from the chalice, so take a sip from the chalice, and if you're going to do that, please help the chalice bearer by getting the bottom of the chalice and guiding it to your lips so that we don't have any accidents. If you would prefer to receive wine from a single container, a single serving container, you come over here, and there will be a cruet bear there who will pour a spot of wine in a cup and you can dispose of the cup at the end of this row. We are, and so we've got a small enough crowd, I would say that just forming a single line as the usher leaves you out and then you can make a decision which direction you want to go when you get here. Finally, if you are not, um, if, 
receiving communion is not a part of your tradition or your custom, in a show of your thoughts and prayers for the Stowe family at this time, I would invite you to still come forward, indicate your desire for a blessing by simply crossing your arms. And if you forget all of that, don't worry, we will remind you when you get here. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our liturgy continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found on page 361 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. The congregation is invited to either stand as you are able or remain seated as you are comfortable. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, Life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, please join with Elizabeth as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Our post-communion prayer is found in your service bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be unto us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is neither death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks. Our closing hymn is hymn number 671, Amazing Grace. <laughs>